Hey guys, Piet Kalmijn here. I hope you are having an awesome day. So in today's video, I would like to show you how you can design a controlled impedance track using Altium Designer. Um, so for instance, you could use this to, to match an antenna in the path on your PCB, but also maybe to connect a differential pair like a USB connector to your controller, for instance. So let's maybe dive a bit into the details first to understand uh, the thing here because I hear a lot of misconceptions about the principle. So if you think about 50 ohm matching, we need to go back to a transmission line circuit. And what you see here is a typical transmission line circuit. Basically, the main idea here, the basic idea, and I've explained that in the video before, so I'll keep it short, is that there is a signal or there is a source, there is some power from that source, you want to transfer it to a load, a certain load that has to go over a line, which we call a transmission line. What we want to avoid is that power from that signal source is reflected back to the source. We want to have as much power as possible being transferred from that source all the way to the load. That's the main idea. Now, if we look at the transmission line, this is typically the, the kind of model that we see. So the, the basic model over here that is used, you see it lumped here as well. Um, so you have an, an inductance, there is a resistance, then you have a conductance and a capacitance. Basically, the resistance in the track over here is mostly determined by the, the copper there. If the copper is wider, that resistor uh, or that resistance will go down. The capacitance is mainly determined by your stack up, the dielectric that is in between two layers, um, how thick that is or how small that is. Inductance as well is typically most determined by your conductor itself and then the conductance again by your stack up, by your substrate. Now, <clears throat> if you have an ideal transmission line, this will be the same impedance all the way over the line. So maybe if you go back here, if you see this as a long transmission line, a couple of centimeters maybe on your PCB, ideally what you would like to have is that the characteristic impedance on this point or on this point, on this point, on this point, that they are all the same. And in that way you will transfer ideally all the power from your source in an ideal way to your load. Now in practice, um, how does it look like if it is not okay and if it is okay, if you have, so this is an example where you have a 50 ohm output and you're measuring with a scope, um, either with a mega ohm input or with a 50 ohm input on the source. So again, this is the, the thing over here. Our scope is now the load. Our source is, let's say, a signal generator generating a block wave. What we see is if you are not, um, let's say, if you have a transmission line that is not the 50 ohm that you expect, um, you see a lot of ringing on that signal. If you have a decent transmission line, uh, what your source is expecting, you see that more or less the complete block wave is transferred to your load. Now, if you take it one step further, the signal in integrity uh, will become much more deteriorated if you have bad matching. So the red is what ideally you would like to see over your load. If you have made a bad transmission line, this is what you will see over your load. It, become, it can become so bad that you're basically not transferring any data anymore, no decent signal. Now in our example, I would like to transfer this to a practical hands-on example with the USB connector connected to a microcontroller. So let's maybe look at the USB specs. Most important thing that we have to look at there today is for the trace impedance, we need 50, uh, 90 ohms in this case, plus or minus 15% differential. Now, how would we start with this? So first of all, I have my schematic over here. This is of course a, a non-functional schematic, but just to explain um, how we would do that. There is a microcontroller over here. These are the two USB inputs. We define this as a differential pair and then we have our USB receptacle. So on that very simple PCB, it will look like this. Imagine that there's a lot of stuff in between over here. I will need to make a, a zigzag trace all the way from USB to the MCU, but we want to have an ideal transmission line. So there's two ways to do that or two common ways to do that. Um, the simple or the most common transmission line is what we call a microstrip line. So basically we have a signal and then the return current um, will go via the ground plane. So that's maybe an, an important one as well. Of course, you'll always have a signal over here, but there is return current in the return path. That return path has to be low impedance, but has to be matched exactly as well. So that's what you see over here, the ground plane 
is our return pad. We have the signal on top. You can also use a grounded coplanar waveguide, which means that you have your signal. Next to that signal, there are two ground traces as well. And then below there's a ground plane as well. The, the nice thing about this is that your signal is nicely boxed uh, in between ground planes. So there's less interference possibilities. Now, how do we start? Um, I have already shown you that we are looking here at the layer stack manager. So typically what you would do is you go to, for instance, EuroCircuits, uh, your PCB supplier, and you get one of their templates. Uh, the, for instance, EuroCircuits, they are providing Altium templates. What that will mean is that you have the exact correct stack up of the boards that you will be producing. So the dielectrica, they are correct. The thickness of every dielectricum is set correct. So you're starting with an ideal representation of your layer stack. Now, next up, we want to define impedance profiles. And let me show you how to do that. Um, using Altium, this is very easy. So we can add an impedance profile over here. Um, what you will see here is how you can define it. So for instance, if we would make an antenna track, we could use a target impedance of 50 ohms, a tolerance of 10%, maybe a bit on the high side for an antenna. And then the type of conductor would be a single conductor. Um, if you select one of these profiles, this is where our theory becomes practice, let's say. So that's the micro strip line that we have seen a couple of minutes before. You have the track on top, ground plane below. And this system is now calculating based on this layer stack, what the width has to be um, of your conductor, for instance, in this case, your antenna track, what the ideal width has to be. In this case, we end up at 50.01 ohms with a deviation of 0.02%. So this is very nice. This is very interesting to use. Today, we don't want to make an antenna track. We want to make a differential pair. So I'll show you how to do that. We add another impedance profile. And remember from the spec, we had to use 90 ohms. So let's make it differential. And let's give in 90 ohms. What you will see that this system is constantly calculating the trace widths, trace gaps that it is needed. So if I would change this back to 80 ohms, you see that these widths are becoming larger. If I go back to 90 ohms, these trace widths become smaller. If I select one of these, what you see is we have the differential pair. So it's micro strip lines, take that in mind. So this is one signal, this is the differential, the other signal, the ground plane. And this is then top layer. So these two are in top layer. The ground plane is defined in the mid layer. And this is very interesting stuff. So we know exactly what width that we need to use. It's automatically calculated for us. We know the trace gap and we can basically start routing. So let's do that. Uh, one more thing we need to set here is in our rules. We need to define how a differential pair routing is done. So we are going to use an impedance profile for that. It's a checkbox that you have, and there's only one differential impedance profile, the D90 uh, that we have made. So let's go ahead and apply that. And then the nice thing is we are already in business here to make our track. So we are working in the top layer. Let's assume that there is a lot of stuff over here where we need to root around a bit. So not a one on one track, but we have to do something like this. And that's it. Now what you see in this case, um, maybe first let's measure these primitives. So the distance between the tracks, you see it is exactly 0 0.127. So that is what we had um, as a calculation result over here. So the trace gap, it had to be 0 0.127. The width that this system determined for our 90 ohms or 90.02 is 0 0.336. If we go back over here and let's select one of these, what you see in the properties is 0 0.336. So this system has automatically used um, that differential impedance profile to make this track. So we can be pretty sure if we are going to produce that board, this will be a nice 90 ohm transmission line all the way from the USB. To our controller. Now there's one problem that you see over here and that is the gap of 0 0.127. In this type of PCB that I am using, let's go to the rules. 
what you will see is that the minimum clearance here is 0 0.15. Uh, we take it below with the 0 0.127. So let's alter that. Um, you can of course take another board stack up, but I'm going to alter it over here and the system will calculate for me what I would need. So if I put it at 0 0.15, you see that the widths are calculated now, they are a bit larger. What I can do, let's save this first. I can select these two and reroute them. So we have both tracks, you go to route, retrace the selected. And what the system will do now is it will update these tracks based on the changed impedance profile. So if again, we now measure these, What you will see over here is the distance is now exactly 0 0.15, so the minimum that we have available in our board stack. And the width of these traces has changed to 0 0.38, and it is exactly what we wanted to have or what was calculated. In this case, we are at 90 ohms exactly. There's no 0 0.2 anymore, uh, 0 0.02 here. It's 90 ohms exactly. So there you go. This is a very simple way uh, to do that. Maybe one more important thing, of course, to mention is we are working with a micro strip line. So you have a track on top and then a ground plane below. Of course, you need to make sure. So this is still called mid layer. It is defined as a plane. So on your mid layer one, if you double click, you need to make sure that this is connected to the ground net. And in that way, so you have the signal flowing in one direction, the reverse current will be flowing through your ground plane. And this will give you an ideal 90 ohm transmission line in, let's say, yeah, less than a couple of minutes to do this. So I hope you like this video. I hope it is much more clear to you right now how you can design very quickly a transmission line with a certain uh, impedance. So if you have any questions, of course, as always, feel free to put them in the comments below. If you like the video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you like this channel, of course, feel free to subscribe. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.